Hey guys, Neri here from Drake Wing Gamers. So if you know me on Twitter, the Gaming Dragon. Today I'm coming back at you another Let's Play episode of Ed Astra. So guys, let's go ahead and jump right back into it, shall we? Please sit back and enjoy for the next 18 minutes while entertaining you. Let's jump right in. Alarm chain, you're up, and let's go. Okay. <clears throat> yes, but you're already part of it, whether you want to be or not. So please, allow me to explain some things. I don't say anything, keeping my arms folded, my expression bored. The jackal seems to take this as, as his cue to continue. Amicus approached me about this deal a week ago, shortly after the incident with Cassius. It seemed simple enough, and I had to agree with him. Your position in this power struggle is becoming ever more precarious. Yep. <laughs> yep. I raise an eyebrow. How so? The rumors about Cassius' intent to disband the Triumvirates have saturated the trial, even though Cato has banned all discussion of it. Word is that Cassius has realized who might have started the rumors. Nefro look Nefro looks pointedly at me, though I try to keep my expression neutral. This has implications for you, obviously, but not only because you possibly sabotage his chances at the throne. I feel my stomach turn a little, realizing I've gotten myself into way more than I'd ever, ever intended. This also brings into question your intelligence. Far too intelligent for a simian, wouldn't you say? I open my mouth, but Nefru goes on. Now, with all this considered, it was only natural for Amicus to come to me, come to me for help. Your life is in danger, Killian, no matter the facade these peaceful palace halls might protect. Might project. I stare at the jackal, surprised at how candid he's being with me. He asked me what I wanted most, and I answered truthfully, an alliance with the wolves if Amicus were to become the emperor. Of course, he, de of course he declined outright, as he should have as the, perspe as, as the prospective emperor. How could he promise something so important with so many implications all over one pet? So, knowing that it was impossible, I offered something a bit more selfish on my part. Copulation with the handsome son of a wolven emperor. To this, he only needed a few moments to agree. Grimace. But I want you to understand something, Killian. If Amicus had found that even that disagreeable, I would have simply asked for nothing. It is the duty of all Kimians to protect any sapient fleeing wolven violence, whether they're sib they be sibling, child, or abandoned. Pet ownership is illegal where I'm from, and the idea is quite disgusting, don't you agree? Nefru glances at me. But wolves love their contracts, and no matter how different Amicus might wish himself to be, he is still a wolf. He despises the idea that he might owe something to a Kimian. And his quickness to accept the deal showed me how that despite how much he wanted to not to, to not want to fuck me, as you put it, there was a part of him that did. In the end, he was willing. I look away, frowning. And I think this is something that has caused a rift between the two of you. You must understand that sex is casual here. It means nothing more than indulging in your corporeal desires. It's one of the few cultural similarities we share with the wolves. I've been told that simians are more similar to cats and that such things hold much more meaning. But you are no longer on simia and un must understand that things are different here. Even if he wants to, which I believe he does, Amicus can't change his philosophy over the course of a single week. I finally find room to speak. You're acting like we're in a relationship or something. You aren't, but you want to be. Amicus loves you. It's clear as Vita, as they say here. I feel that little thrill in my chest and my face blushes furiously. Nefro goes on like he didn't actually just say that, though. Just... so yes, if you don't like the idea of Amicus fucking another man, then claim him as your own man. I frown. Claim? I'm going by woven terms here. I'm sure you have your own. Did Nefro just ask me to ask Amicus out? Now, does that clear things up for you? Even though I just woke up, I'm already feeling exhausted. Man, I guess. There was a little more to it than that, though. Which I'm sure can be settled in the future. Civil discussions can do wonders. Now, we really must be getting to trial, if you're wanting to go. Nefru rises, raises an eyebrow at me. I find myself shaking my head, but not to deny the jackal his request. Rather, it's because I don't know what the hell this guy is up to. I get up and Nefru offers his arm to me, which I stare at. Shall I escort you? This is something I'd see the jackal do multiple times to, Virgi to Virginia and Alex. For some reason, he, he seemed to really just enjoy escorting people around. After his little lecture, I can tell that he's trying to smooth things over between me and Amicus. So reluctantly, I reach out and take his arm in both hands, if only to please him. And pleased he seems to be, a tugging at the corner of his muzzle making me think he's not he's trying not to smile too much. As he guides me out the door, I find myself feeling out the fur on his arm. 
much more silky and smooth compared to Amicus, but not quite as fluffy. It's not as nice as Amicus's coat, but it does feel nice in a different way. There's a lot of muscle there, too, and I wonder if the Jackal works out in the amphitheater, though I've never seen him there. I guess I can see why so many people are into this guy, if muscles are your thing. As we continue through the halls, I notice we're taking a different route than the one into the throne room. Where are we going? To meet the star of the most asinine entertainment show in the galaxy. What better way to determine the fate of all things, siblings and parents alike, than through meaningless wolven spectacle? What? Nefru pauses in front of a door, gently pulling away from me while his paw is held delica delicately up to the panel. What I'm saying is that quite a bit is depending on your wolf right now, and he might need some encouragement. I'm still staring at the jackal when he finally presses the panel, opening the door. When I look back, I find myself looking into a much smaller room. It's simple and bare, just a bed and a dresser. The air is thick with, calm, with a calming smell of incense as it creeps into the hallway and washes, washes over me in a warm wave. And there, sitting on the bed, is Amicus. Before I can look back at Nefer, the wolf suddenly looks up. They both stare at each other for a moment, then the wolf is suddenly on his feet, stumbling towards me. He stops, half, he stops himself halfway through the room, though. A paws clasped in front of himself. I've never seen him so disheveled before. His fur is stuck up all over his neck and shoulders, his cape is askew, and his eyes are red and bleary. Before I know it, I'm walking into the room toward the wolf. Are you okay? Amicus tries to smooth his fur down, but it sticks right back up. I I'm fine. I was just meditating. You look awful. Isn't the trial in less than an hour? Yes. There's a moment of silence, and that goes by just as I stare at the wolf. Are you going, then? You should get ready. Killian. I stop, waiting. The pause is long, when Amicus finally speaks, his voice is so quiet I can barely hear it. I don't think I was meant for this. My heart sinks. Meant for what? Everything in this damned empire. I've done absolutely nothing right. Everything has been handed to me on a platter of my entire life. But the first thing I actually have to fight for... But this is the first time I actually have to fight for something. I know you don't think I took this seriously, but I did. I tried. I wasn't prepared, and you were right. I see a little wetness around his eyes, but he aggressively wipes, them at, wipes at them with an arm. Well, weeks ago, I might have welcomed his epiphany. This is the absolute worst moment for it. I couldn't have kept my back... I couldn't... I couldn't even keep my best friend. I've been a terrible emperor. It takes me a moment to realize that he's talking about me. Amicus. I'm sorry. I I'm sorry I didn't tell you everything. That I treated you poorly. That I got you into this stupid mess in the first place. And that I can't get you out of it. Wolf's voice catches on that last part. And I wonder with some astonishment if I'm actually going to see him cry. But he manages to hold it together, looking down at the floor. I just wanted to do what was best for you. But I was wasn't thinking of you while I did it. It was in I was inconsiderate. I'm sorry. Amicus stands there quietly, apparently finished. I don't know if this is more, more about me or about him feeling inadequate for the Emperorship. I have no doubt that our little fight yesterday caused it, though. Seeing the wolf like this, it hurts, but it also makes me kind of angry. This isn't, how, this isn't the Amicus that I know. I reach up, setting a hand on his shoulder, and he suddenly looks up at me. You're less than an hour away from becoming the Emperor. You need to act like it. What? You think your dad would have acted like this when he wasn't sure of himself? Your grandfather Drusus? There's a time and a place, and now is not the time. I don't know if they would have, but I'm grasping at straws at this point. I... And honestly, this is a, this is about a lot more about you... Honestly, this is about a lot more than you or me or anyone here. This is about the lives of millions of sapients. About your entire empire. You think it all deserves to go to shit because suddenly you're not really sure of yourself? You're such a good person. Basically, the opposite of what this society is, and you want to put that into your and you want to put that into your rule. That's amazing, but now you're suddenly willing to give up. What the fuck is wrong with you? you yeah, you made a bunch of mistakes, but that doesn't matter now. What matters is that you make sure that piece of shit brother of yours doesn't take the throne. So you better get your ass out there and beat the hell out of him in this stupid debate. I'm not sure what else to say, so I stop, breathing hard. After a moment, I realize the wolf is smiling at me, and it takes me a moment to calm down from the Hollywood movie pep talk. What? I'm gonna go out there, Kill Killian. There's no doubt about that. I just... I was just having a moment. I was trying to be more honest with you, but thank you. I frown. Well, you sure picked a hell of a moment to have it. I know. I've just been having a terrible time after yesterday is all. I needed to apologize to you. I deflate a little, but there's some relief there, too, seeing Amicus somewhat back to his old self. I... well, I for... I forgive you, but this is a lot bigger than us right now. I know it is, and what I'm feeling is a lot bigger than us as well. The wolf sets a paw on my shoulder. But I'm honest about what I said. I'm sorry, and I will never do anything involving you without your consultation again. And I will take your cultural difference into better consideration in the future. 
I look up at Amicus, at his earnest face, and I find myself hugging him, and he hugs me back tightly. We still need to talk about things, but we can do that later. You need to kick Cassius' ass first. I know. Amicus pulls back, both paws on my shoulders now. And I will. There's a, gen there's a gentle clearing of a throat behind us, and we both look back to see Neferu casually lounging in the doorway. If you're finished, the trial begins in 30 minutes. Immediately, Amicus scowls at the sight of the jackal, but he nods. I better get going, then. So you're feeling better now? Much better, thanks to you. I smile as I feel a wave of relief, even though this is just like Amicus to be so easily cheered up. I allow the wolf to pull me toward the door. Neferu moves out of the way as we exit the stifling, the stifling meditation room. All right, I'm on my way to the shower. I'll be watching the rhetoric thing, I mean. Heh, <laughs> I look for you. And we'll talk after this. Yeah, we'll talk after you after your emperor. All right. Amicus leans in to kiss me on the lips and pauses before planting it on my cheek instead. With that, he winks, then turns and dashes up the hall, running at a running at a full sprint. I hear a soft chuckle behind me. Well, that went rather well. I don't think that would be half as easy. I glance back at the jackal as he basically reveals he's been planning this all along. I guess it was obvious. Shall we head to the throne room? They'll be waiting. They'll be want wanting us sitting down early so they can film us. The whole thing is a dreary spectacle, after all. All right. With that, I follow the jackal toward the throne room, hoping that what I'd said to Amicus is enough to get him in the right headspace to let, help let him win. One second, guys. One moment. All right, guys, we're back. Sorry about that. Okay. <clears throat> in just a few hours, I'll know if I'll be leaving. If I'll be leaving soon or staying for a long, long time. Either way, I'm just glad that this has happened. Wait, I thought that there were, um, basically three, three trials. This is the second one. The third one is trial by combat. Is he, is he just assuming Amicus is going to win that? Yeah, I guess he is. All right. Anyway, yeah, because, like, Cassius could have a trick up his sleeve for that fight. All right. I follow Nefro to the throne room. The cavern is spaced just as empty as it was during the first trial. Like the first trial, though, a few of the palace regulars are sitting on the benches, Virginia on the left side of the room, while Alex sits on the right. The cat is sat alone, looking tiny compared to the rest of the room, his tail curled neatly under his paws in his lap. He smiles when he sees me, and I make as if to go sit next to him, but that's when the jackal grabs my hand. I pause, and I see Alex's own inquisitive look before I turn to Neferu. What? Why don't we give Virginia some company? The jackal smiles at me gently, one of his ears flicking in the direction of the she-wolf. Um, you can. I was gonna go sit with Alex. Nefro's expression doesn't change, but he doesn't let go either, and his voice takes on a gentle but ominous tone, making me feel a little uncomfortable. Depending on how this trial goes, we may have some business to take care of before it officially ends. It would be best if you were close to me. It's then that I realize what he's getting at. Although I don't know what the process of becoming Nefro's pet is, I imagine it involves some sort of official business like signing something. So I give Alex a little frown and shrug, gesturing at the jackal. The cat continues to look confused, so as I turn away and follow Neferu to the benches on the other side of the room. Neferu? Virginia sits daintily on the bench, one leg elegantly crossed over the other side as she holds up a paw, which the jackal kisses. One second- Ah, oh, God, why is this music so loud? No, nope, 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 nope. I'm sorry about that, guys, we're back. Uh, this music is so loud in this game, I don't know why. Okay. All right. Virginia sits daintily on the bench, one leg elegantly crossed over the other. She holds up a paw, while the, with, with, with which the jackal kisses. Good day to you, Virginia. Even though I try to stay behind Nefru, Virginia peers around the jackal's muscular side to stare straight at me. I see that you've brought a guest. She holds out her paw again, and it takes me a moment to realize that I should kiss it. I did start that trend, after all. Indeed. Amicus requested I keep him company during the trial. As I come up from the paw kissing, I see Virginia frowning. My brother shouldn't be burning, burdening you with a silly chore like that. The pet is capable of staying in his room, I imagine. It was a mutual agreement. Besides, he is rather good company once you get to know him. Oh, really? It seems our little Simeon is full of surprises. The she-wolf looks pointedly at me, and I don't have much time to wonder what she's talking about before Nefri is sitting down next to her, pulling me to his side to sit next to him. That would be an accurate observation. There's a momentary pause before I see Virginia lean forward a bit a bit out of the corner of my eye. When she speaks again, her voice is lowered. So the rumors are true. There's another pause, this time from Neferu. I don't believe I'm in a position to speculate on that. It is not my place to involve myself in woven politics. 
Virginia laughed softly, one that sounds completely fake. I'm not a fool, Neferu. I may enjoy your suave tactics, but I'd rather you not to use them against me. Do not dream of such a thing, Virginia. Surely. Virginia shifts again, and now I know for sure that she's looking directly at me. So, I suppose he understands what we're saying, then. Well, he is sapient, and he does possess a lingua. I mean, he understands us. Virginia puts even more emphasis on the word. I see Neferu looking at the floor, still smiling, though his paws seem to clasp each other a bit tighter than usual. You'd know better than I, being a wolf. Our children are as intelligent as ourselves, so I'm used to such an idea. Don't feign ignorance, Neferu. You've been around him far more than I have. It's a simple question, and one that you should answer honestly. Otherwise, am I to assume that you've brought a little spy to our conversation? Although the words seem harsh and dangerous, Virginia's tone is light and Nefru just laughs. You accuse me of deception, and we both know you've already figured out the answer. Why do you feign ignorance? The little fans herself with an air of nonchalance. It's the best weapon in discourse, and it is easy to feign stupidity, at least for me. It is expected on my part. Why would you say something like that? I have a vagina, Nefru. <laughs> it takes me a moment to absorb what Virginia just said. But Nefru is already chuckling with what's probably the first genuine laugh of the conversation. I see Alex look over at us again, and this time it, it looks like his eyes are narrowed a bit. It takes the Jackal a few seconds to get himself under control again as Virginia continues to wave her fan, looking rather pleased with herself. Sorry, I'm not used to bluntness here. It's not impossible for us to be blunt on this moon, Nefru, especially amongst friends. I notice the wolf is looking at me again, and once again I look down. Anyway, it seems you made quite the mistake in overlooking Simia. I may have to do a little research of my own in the archives. Amicus clearly knew something that we did not. Research? I feel my stomach drop. Although Amicus had assured me of things, I don't even know if I really look at look like a simian. All it might take is a picture to know that I'm not actually from Simia. I try to put that thought out of my mind for now as the doors suddenly open and Cato walks in, making his way quickly to the throne. Virginia finally takes her eyes off of me, and I can only hope that she's not going to follow through on her research plans. The throne room is so quiet that I hear the old wolf grunt as he makes his way up the stairs before turning to face us. After a few seconds, he sits down, his heavy, muscular body slashed a bit in his seat, gazing out at us through, through his visor. A few more moments pass in silence, and just as I'm wondering if the trial is about to begin, I hear a soft, mechanical whirring sound as the panel in the ceiling opens up. A dozen camera drones drift down lazily, fanning out in the air to position themselves in various locations throughout the room. One of them floats towards us and hovers just above our heads, the lens seeming to focus on my face. I drop my head again, the action having become second nature since I landed on this moon. Nefru nudges me, though. Come now, Amicus brought you here to be seen. His tone is light as always, but I sense he's not saying that just to tease me. We're all playing a role here, and my role is to make Amicus look good, to show off the triumvirates that he went to great lengths to obtain an exotic, fascinating alien pet. I might not like it, but that doesn't matter right now, so I lift my head. That's a kind of a perfect place to pause it. Alright, guys, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, ring that notification bell, leave a super thanks or a tip if you can, it always helps. Until the next video, I love you all. I'll see you next time. Bye bye!